Welcome back. A new movie goes from celebration to apocalyptic chaos on the big screen. ABC Columbia movie reviewer Matt Perone explains if the push for independence was enough to hold audiences captive. Welcome to another Monday. Once again, Finding Dory swam away with the box office numbers, but there were four new releases this weekend. I thought about reviewing the one with deep content and true life messages, but like I said, June is a month for sequels, so I decided to finish it off with my fourth sequel of the month. Independence Day Resurgence follows 20 years after its predecessor, and although it didn't pull in the same numbers as the original, it was still good enough to take second at the box office. So here's my take on it, and at the end, I'll throw in a few thoughts on the surprise movie of the weekend. Our film begins pretty much 20 years to the day after the events of the first film. Earth has united in the aftermath of the alien attack. There is no more war and we have used the alien technology to advance our planet and prepare a defense for any future attack. Arriving at the 20 year anniversary, the major players from the previous film are having nightmares of the alien force returning, which starts to become corroborated by the old alien technology suddenly coming back to life and alien prisoner activity kicking up. Suddenly, everyone's fears are realized as the enemy returns. Having to put Earth's newest defense technology to the test, the results seem fickle at best, since even though we've had 20 years to prepare, so have they. Their first appearance wreaks global havoc, much like the original However, this time, the ship is as big as the Atlantic Ocean. We see the casualties begin to mount and decide to employ similar tactics that worked in the past. A group of expert pilots led by Will Smith's son from the first movie lead an attack against the ship. Unfortunately, the aliens are wise to these methods and anticipating our every move, they are able to bait us into failure. As the movie progresses, we learn that their plan is to steal our planet's core, hence destroying the existence of Earth. Once again, everything seems lost and extinction seems imminent. It will take the ingenuity of all our heroes from the first film, our new rising stars, and a little help from possible extraterrestrial allies to save humanity. A final last minute plan of attack is organized and the action we were expecting plays out against this new alien queen and her forces. So I'm going to go ahead and admit it. I had hopes for this movie, but I basically expected to be let down. I had just graduated high school when the first one was released and it was revolutionary. It had effects that no one had seen before and it basically kicked off the world destruction genre that still exists to this day. The problem for this sequel is that we don't have that innocent mindset anymore that would allow this movie and its special effects to wow us. It's just like any other movie nowadays. It's definitely entertaining, but it doesn't have that amaze factor that the first one did. The exposition and the setup take way too long. The love story is forced and unnecessary. And with the exposition taking so long, the ending and final battle scene just seem rushed and don't have that dire feeling of the first movie. I'm sure that if I were a kid and I had only seen the first one on DVD and not experienced it like I did, then this may very well be an enjoyable sequel. They of course set it up for future movies, but they use a premise that I don't think would be wise to follow up on. Look, if you saw the first one, you have to see this one for closure. Just don't expect it to outdo the first. Just watch it for the entertainment value. Now, on the flip side, the movie The Shallows opened this weekend. Watching the previews, you gotta wonder how a girl versus a great white shark can take up an hour and 30 minutes, but the time flies by. I was amazed that even though the movie is fairly predictable, I still found myself jumping a good bit. I think it's because of how well they did with the shark. None of that cheesy CGI that made Deep Blue Sea not that scary at all. Definitely got a good bit of enjoyment and scares out of this one. Well, this has been your Monday Movie Musing. Back to you. All right, Matt, well, two options for you to check out. One last look at your seven-day forecast when we come back live from Maine and Gervais.